a well-deserved applause. Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, yeah, my name's John, and I work at a company called Propelad, um, and we help small businesses and specifically small e-commerce stores advertise their products on Facebook. So what I'm gonna talk about uh, now is uh, how we use their data to try and give them an unfair advantage and improve their, their returns with their advertising. So it's kind of a different slant to what we've heard already this morning, whereas most of the talkers previous to me were talking kind of enterprise level data solutions and kind of to our customers, that level of data is kind of inaccessible. Um, so it might be an interesting kind of slant. Um, so uh, yeah, without further ado, this is me. Uh, I didn't realize the picture would be on the previous slide, but hi. Um, my name's John, and uh, I'll just tell you a little bit about me. Um, so my background is uh, similar to many of you in that I went to college. I did a marketing degree, uh, realized I had an interest in advertising, and ended up um, doing a postgrad in advertising. After that, I joined uh, an, an ad agency, and I was working as an account exec, um, and that was all great. And kind of th three months after that, um, I had a couple of weeks off, and I found online poker. Um, and I played a lot of online poker in those two weeks. Um, and I did very well. Uh, Q, any opportunity to put in a picture of a big giant novelty check. Uh, if you ever not have an opportunity in your life to hold one, it's definitely uh, uh, an interesting experience and hopefully one you get to do. So after those two weeks, I went back to my company and I was actually offered uh, a promotion. But as it turned out, um, the annual salary that I was being offered, I had actually earned in the two weeks previous playing online poker. And this is uh, in the early kind of 2000s. Um, so I had a decision to make. Um, do I want to kind of continue along a traditional career trajectory that I planned out, which was kind of marketing, advertising, or did I want to take a punt and uh, go with online poker? So I ended up being a professional poker player um, for eight years uh, after that. Um, so I'm just gonna talk a bit about that because there's some interesting comparisons, I think, between that and, uh, and marketing. So, Poker is a game of luck at its very essence. Um, anyone can win any given hand. If you're dealt the right few cards, uh, you, you can win a hand. But in the long term, uh, this is a great saying, the more you play, the luck you get. And that's kind of true to an extent, simply for a number of reasons, because uh, the more you play, the more you learn, the better you get, and therefore the, more, the better you succeed. Um, so when I started playing poker, um, it was quite interesting in that there was a big kind of knowledge gap. And when I apply myself to things, I throw myself wholehearted into it. And I was playing poker kind of 60 plus hours a week. And when I wasn't playing, I was reading about poker, I was learning poker, I was studying poker. I probably owned 200 books about poker, um, which is kind of obscene. Um, but that's the way it was. And the vast majority of other players were recreational players. Um, and there was a lot of them, and there was plenty of money to be made. But as the years progressed, that kind of knowledge gap changed. And the same kind of has applied to marketing at the moment in that the age of the internet, so to speak, came about. And there was so much information out there that your average recreational player, A, became a lot better simply because they were reading uh, blog posts, they were watching training videos, they were learning more about the game and how to play. But also, there were a lot more professional players. So it kind of changed the dy dynamic of things. And it was less about kind of taking money from recreational players, uh, and it was more about playing against other professionals. So the kind of most of my poker career was actually spent playing against other pro professional poker players, not against recreational players. And when that skill gap is narrowed and the knowledge gap is, is narrowed, there's not much difference between me and another professional poker player and another professional poker. We're kind of just passing money around the table. So the only edge to be gained was through data and through being creative or having better access to data. So there were some software tools that I used to gather data about my opponents. And I probably played over a million hands of poker uh, in my career. And every single one of them I have data about and who I played against and how they reacted to a specific card and things like that. Um, so what that meant was it became less about a game of skill and more about a game of data. Because data was giving 
me the knowledge as to how my opponents would play in a specific situation. And that knowledge was leading to an advantage, and an advantage makes money. And the same applies to business uh, today. So I would ask you kind of, we're all marketers, but are you smarter than your competition? And I mean, you might well be, and you probably definitely were at some point. But that same knowledge gap has narrowed in the past number of years. And there's so much more information out there that knowing more doesn't necessarily matter today. Um, and it means less and less every day, every week, and every year, because brilliant companies like HubSpot are putting out so much content about marketing. And marketers themselves, we all embrace content marketing. We know about inbound marketing, and no better people than ourselves to talk about marketing than marketers themselves. So we're living in the age of kind of content. So when it comes to advertising and marketing, that knowledge gap has really been narrowed because information is everywhere and experience can be learned and be learned really, really rapidly if somebody applies themselves. So there's so much information out there like blogs, white papers, emails, and so on. And at the last point in my bubble there, uh, MOOCs, which is massively open online courses, they're a new phenomenon as well, which gives the average punter the ability to take a class from Stanford University for free and get that kind of knowledge. So my whole point here is that the knowledge gap has really shifted. And so how do we gain an advantage over our competitors when it comes to advertising? So back in the good old days of uh, digital marketing and uh, buying ads, I'm sure we all remember the amount of businesses that were funded on AdWords and whatnot, where you could simply throw money at the problem and you would get a, re a return on your investment almost regardless of what you did. Uh, like in this report, for example, for 50 quid, um, I think it's 3,700 clicks and a 16% click-through rate, which it's very hard to fail when you're getting numbers like this if, if you're advertising. But unfortunately, um, that's now changed. So advertising today, and my kind of area of expertise is with regards to Facebook advertising, that's kind of shifted. And it's much less about it's much less about um, getting cheap bids, simply because there's a lot more people advertising. Uh, so it's a lot more competitive and the prices have gone up. So it's much more about using what data you have access to in order to gain an advantage. So Facebook has kind of made a shift themselves. Um, you've probably heard of the term edge rank before. So what this traditionally meant was if you had a thousand fans of your business page on Facebook, and you posted a post there, traditionally about 16% of them would see that post. And so a lot of people thought Facebook was a free channel um, and an organic channel, and it was for quite some time. But Facebook have IPO'd, and now they're much more like television rather than a social media. So they are actively monetizing their platform, and it's something as marketers we need to realize that Facebook is not an organic channel, it's a paid channel, and we need to embrace that. So at the moment, only around 1% to 2% of your fan base will actually see your organic posts, um, thanks to people like Upworthy, which we saw earlier uh, this morning. Um, there are 25 million SMBs with pages on Facebook, and that's, that number has probably gone up. Um, of them, about a million are actively advertising every month, but the vast, vast majority of them are following Facebook's lead, and they're just boosting their posts or buying likes for their page. So you can see here, Facebook do a really, really good job of getting people into the businesses into the top of the funnel. Um, on this page alone, I think there's five, five calls to action uh, to put money into the platform. But it's not smart advertising. Um, the person with the page might feel like they're getting some success, they'll see they're getting a few more likes, but those kind of likes don't actually mean anything to their business in the long term. So I'm just gonna talk about how we at Propelad are trying to solve that problem, uh, specifically for e-commerce merchants. So our kind of tagline is that we help non-expert advertisers try and achieve expert advertising results. And I'm just gonna run you through our product and uh, tell you how we try and do that. We're a Facebook PMD. Uh, which means a preferred marketing developer. Um, and I think the talk after me 
is the kind of poster child of PMDs, uh, the, the guys in Nanigans who do a really, really good job. And they, they kind of deal with bigger brands and we're positioned to try and deal with smaller e-commerce stores. So uh, Facebook is an interesting beast in that of those one million active advertisers, 70% um, of them are probably e-commerce stores. Um, and they're spending money trying to, trying to shift products. And, and that works. And because there's so many of them. Um, excuse me. Sorry, I'll go back. So uh, Facebook, there's a, a million advertisers. 70% of them are e-commerce e store owners. And they're, they're trying to promote their products. And they're trying to shift, shift their goods on Facebook through advertising. And that's working. So companies like Nanigans, on the other hand, are dealing with uh, bigger brands who are actually spending most of the money on Facebook. So if there was $10 billion spent on Facebook last year, 80 or maybe even 90% of that was spent by big brands. And the remainder was spent by my one million guys um, who are spending a lot less, but there's a lot more of them. And they're growing exponentially. And that's due to double, their spend is due to double uh, in the last year. It has doubled in the last year. And uh, e-commerce stores themselves are also growing. We've kind of finally come to the age of e-commerce. We always heard about, you know, e-commerce is the next big thing. Um, and we all held our breath, but it never really happened. Um, but now it actually is happening because of e-commerce platforms like the likes of Shopify and BigCommerce, who have recently, so Shopify just recently raised $100 million, and I think BigCommerce just raised $60 million. So money's been plowed into that ecosystem simply because uh, we're actually in the age of e-commerce now. Um, so what we do uh, in Propelad is to try and create, or what we're trying to do is, uh, we're trying to create an automated data-driven solution for these guys. So you can see uh, on the left there, there's a few kind of, of these e-commerce platforms that we integrate with, like Shopify on the left-hand side. Yeah. And uh, on the right-hand side is Facebook itself. And we sit in the middle. And what we do is, because we're connected into their stores directly, so they don't necessarily use a CRM system like we heard earlier. These are small businesses. But even if they don't realize it, they actually have a CRM system, and that's their e-commerce platform. And because we're integrated directly with them, we get access to all their data. So when it comes to products, we know all their products, and we know all the information about their products. We know who their customers are. We know what their customers have bought. We know how many products they have in stock and how many products they don't have in stock. And we use all that information to try and create uh, really targeted, powerful Facebook ads for them. Um, so just run you through how the product actually works. Because we're dealing with um, busy uh, e-commerce store owners, they may or may not be a one-man band. There may only be a few people. They may not have even a, a dedicated marketing person. Often they will have just one person, let's say. They don't uh, have the bandwidth to, to, to go to the, the lengths that, that they should be doing if they want to use, use their data to create these ads. So we've kind of automated it all for them, or trying to automate it all for them. So uh, when they first log in, we ask them to choose an objective. And we've kind of divided our uh, application into two tracks. And on one side, uh, we ask them if they want to acquire new leads. Or on the other side, it's try to try and turn those leads into customers. Um, then we ask them to choose a product. We show them all their products from their store. They simply pick a product. We then use all their data to create a Facebook ad for them. So we know their product name. We know their product price. Uh, we know how they've described their product. And we know where that product lives on the internet, which is on their store. We're not driving traffic to a Facebook page. We're trying to drive traffic to their actual store, where it's their stuff that they're trying to sell. Uh, and we use all that data to create an ad. and. Uh, of course, we always have that link. So there's never any errors. But the user can then go in, or the merchant can then go in, and make any changes that they want. Uh, for example, if they want to add a bit more flavor to the ad, um, which we recommend, or if they want to add in a special offer, or something like that, or choose a call to action. Um, and then finally, they just select their budget, and that's it. It's published. That ad is live on Facebook. And uh, I think a couple of months ago, just as an experiment, 
I created a, a Vine. I don't know if you know about Twitter Vine, but it's basically a, a, a video, Twitter video app where you can only record for six seconds. And I was able to actually put an ad live on, on Facebook using my sample store in that six seconds without editing it. So that's how quick they can go through that process if they want. Um, once uh, their ad has been published, we, we, we run short campaigns, so our campaigns all last for three days. And the reason for that is uh, we're trying to be dynam dynamic. So they have certain items in stock, but when they sell them, they don't want to be spending money advertising them. Um, so crucially in our reports, um, when, when they install our app, we take the liberty to uh, embed conversion tracking, uh, Facebook conversion tracking pixel, that's a bit technical, into their uh, checkout page. But what that actually means is, when they come to view their reports, they can actually see, see if those ads have actually generated any sales for them. So it's totally transparent advertising. They can easily work out their ROI. Um, and we're, wor we're kind of working on how we can make that even more transparent by using kind of the price of the goods and their profit margins or guessing how much profit they're making and actually pinpoint the exact number of dollars, pounds, or euros that they're actually making from, the, from that campaign. So how do we use their data? So in Facebook advertising, there's three, there's three main ways you can use data. Well, there's four. So <laughs> the kind of traditional way is just kind of demographic information. There's 1.2 billion, probably 1.3 billion today, uh, people on Facebook. So their customers are on Facebook. And it's just a matter of segmenting that data and finding the right people who are interested or likely to be interested in their products. So one of the types of uh, audiences we use is a thing called a custom audience. And what that essentially means is you can upload a list of email addresses or phone numbers or user IDs into Facebook, and anybody can do this. Um, so for example, uh, Niels might want to take the 250 people here and stick their email addresses into Facebook. And what Facebook then do is try and find matches. And they have about a 60% match rate. So what that then means is uh, you can create an ad on the back of that targeting those people and trying to get you guys to come to the next uh, marketing conference. So that's how, look, uh, sorry, that's how a custom audience works. And then a lookalike audience is interesting in that Facebook take that data and they find those profiles and they analyze them and then they try and create another audience for you on the back of that information. And this is all done programmatically and anonymously in the back end in, in the Facebook API. So what that means is I can have the the kind of the group of, I might have 150 of you, and I'll try and create a lookalike audience, but say I want the next conference to be in London, so I'll target the UK, and they'll give me back a list of the top 1% of people in that region that are most similar to you guys in terms of your attributes. So it's a really good way of finding new customers and exploring new markets, and that's really relevant for an online store, simply because they're not bound by geography. And then the last thing there is uh, website custom audiences. And what that means is you can embed code into your website. And if anyone visits, they stick a cookie on you. And then later on, you can remarket to them. But the beauty of our product is because we're integrated again with our platforms, that all this is just done automatically. They don't need, like the data hook guys, a day to set up. They literally need to just click a button and it's done, uh, which we're hoping is good. So uh, just going to run through a few different kind of ads. Um, I wish I'd used a better image for this. <laughs> so this is kind of a lead gen ad that we might run. And you can see all this information is just generated uh, programmatically. So we, we knew the product name, the full heavy silk skirt. We knew the price. They chose uh, the uh, limited availability. That's kind of a a list of call to, calls to action that we let them choose from, or they can input their own. And then there's the link, and that's a, that's a lookalike ad. Then we also do retargeting. So for example, if you're browsing for an iPad case and you go to a store that sells it, who use Propel ad, uh, later on that evening, 
on Facebook, we can show you that same product. So it's really, really targeted one-to-one -one advertising. There's a connection there. You've seen this product, now we're trying to get you back into the store to complete the transaction. And then finally, uh, another type of ad that we create is this kind of cross-selling ad. And the way this works is, with this ad, we'd be targeting uh, people who have already bought these red shoes. And so you can imagine if you own those shoes and you're on Facebook and you see a picture of your own shoes, that immediately resonates with you. You know that you recognize that product. And we're using data to try and recommend similar products to cross-sell and upsell. But you can think outside the box when it comes to these type of audiences. So here is an ad that I created for ourselves. Um, and it was asking our customers to give us a review in the App Store for, for our app. So it's, it's kind of using, using a bit of creativity and our own data to try and find people in a place where they may not have been expecting to hear from us. So everybody expects to get the emails from us, and they do, and they get lots of them. Um, everybody expects to hear us shouting about our e-commerce blog posts, which we do as well. But they weren't necessarily expecting to hear from us on Facebook. And sometimes you can catch people off guard, and that can only be a good thing. So I'll just leave you with one thought, which is how are you using your data to, uh, cr how are you using your data creatively to try and get an advantage over your competitors? And that's it. Thanks very much.